my name is David Gray. I am a second year graduate at Schroeder's. Um, I interned there back in 2018 and then started the grad scheme in 2019. Um, I studied PPE at University of York. Um, and at Schroeder's, I work in the distribution department, which is what basically what they call sales. My main role is selling to insurance clients, which is, I mean, essentially 100 million plus, which is really cool. Um, and on my internship, I was selling to intermediary clients, which is smaller, like wealth managers, things like that. The reason I chose to go into asset management was, was mostly because I studied economics at A-level and then at university um, as one third of my degree. Um, and I heard a lot of stuff about it. I didn't really like the investment banking stuff as much. Um, I much preferred the whole um, investment strategy, things like that, you know, going into the stock market. Um, so I decided asset management was the best place for me to be. I did an internship with Schroeder's because I'd heard about them. Um, basically, I, I didn't know much about asset management when I applied back in 2018, uh, but Schroeder's looked like a great company from their website. Um, and I thought, you know, may as well apply and, and intern and absolutely love my, my internship there. Um, and I was lucky enough uh, for them to offer me a, a job at the end of it. And, and I stayed because um, I found that Schroeder's, they treat you like um, they, they treat you like a permanent member of staff. They don't they don't really treat you like you're um, an intern, which I think was was my worry going in was I was just going to be doing kind of basic intern work. Um, which is they kind of gave me as, as an afterthought, um, but but no, they, they got me doing things that actually added value, um, and I was learning at the same time. So that was pretty much what you can ask for in an internship, I think. I, obviously, it's a lot of working from home at the moment. Um, the office is open, but I go in occasionally. Um, when I'm working from home, I work from about eight till six. Um, I usually log in send a couple emails and then I focus from like 8.30 till 10.30, I kind of shut myself out and just get stuff done, um, which some people aren't thrilled about because they can't get hold of me, but that's kind of just my time to, to, to focus on whatever I'm doing. Um, and it's a pretty typical working day. I mean, it's, it's a lot of meetings, uh, it's a lot of calls, whether that be one-on-one -on -one or conference calls. Um, and it's kind of just, particularly in sales, you, you've got to, be pretty flexible with your with your to-do list, let's say. Like a, a client can come in and request something urgently and say, I need this by the end of the day. And you pretty much just have to run with that. Um, or, you know, somebody can say, oh, we've got a pitch coming up. I need you to do research for this. You know, I need it by the end of tomorrow. And you have to suddenly learn all about this client that, that you've never heard of before, maybe. Um, and kind of cancel your plans for the day and just uh, go full speed on that. So it's sort of, yeah, it's sort of a mix of different things, which I think is what I, I like about it is that it's quite dynamic. I'm, I'm always learning something new and doing something different from the day before. Um, and I always try to make sure that I, I can get my stuff done by, by six. It, do, it doesn't always happen, but I try to log off at, at six and then just, just chill in the evenings because I don't like thinking about work once, once I've done. I try to shut it off as best I can. It was in the summer of last year, I worked on a, a pitch basically that, that kind of came to us very, very late. Um, and it was worth about two billion, I think, which was, you know, I couldn't believe there was that many zeros on it, to be honest. And I, I was just sort of brought in, uh, the, the pitch was at the end of the week, I was brought in on Monday. Um, so I had to get, as I, uh, as I was saying previously, just get up to speed with the client, you know, learn all this stuff and then just, you know, go flat out on research. Um, and I was spending quite a lot of time in the office, actually, even though it was um, even though it was the pandemic and I was kind of working with people in person for the first time in a few months, which was which was really exciting, even though there were quite a few late nights and it was a lot of hard work. It was one of those things that was really satisfying to, to get over the line. Um, and I was lucky enough that they and they don't normally do this, um, invited me into the room to be with them while they pitched. So I actually got to see the whole pitching process from start to finish. Um, and normally, you know, grads don't really get anywhere near the uh, the actual the actual pitch because you need to have a pretty complex um, level of understanding of the, the client and stuff like that. And it's usually like fund managers and sales managers that are in there. But uh, whilst I wasn't actually pitching, uh, it was cool to actually see what was going on. So I think that was probably my best, the best project I've been on so far.
I think there's a couple of obvious ones, like work hard and be helpful and be very personable and things like that. You know, it's it's always helpful if you're a if you're a hard worker and if you if you get along with people. Um, that's kind of a given. Um, one of the big ones I think is to to take responsibility. I would say you need to. It, it, you know, it's all well and good kind of things when things go wrong, you sort of um, try to bounce back. But I think what is essential, particularly in asset management, where that you, you will make mistakes and you will have setbacks, you need to kind of look at yourself and say, OK, you know, where did that go wrong? What could I have done differently to improve? Um, even if it's completely out of your hands. And this was sort of it took me a while to kind of learn um, the best way of doing this, when I, particularly when I was at university. And let's say I didn't get a good grade in a in a a test or, or something like that um you it's very easy to make excuses and say things like well the timing was bad or i had all these other tests going on at the same time or um oh, i had you know a friend's birthday whatever it was uh, but it's actually i think better to say you know you may you may have had lots of bad luck but you know how could i have done that differently and, and got a better grade or got a better outcome for myself um and you don't see it a lot and, and it kind of I think it transpires into learning from your mistakes and owning up to your mistakes because one of the things that I've heard from um, people who have worked in the industry a long time is that the the people who who go far are the ones who are able when they make a mistake to say yeah that was that was my fault I, I messed that up um, rather than the people who who make a mistake and then say yeah well you know it's kind of your fault kind of your fault I, I sort of did something wrong um, people you know people much prefer it when you when you do that um, the other thing I'd say is to, to be the one who, who goes first. So just if you're in the office, be the first to introduce yourself. Um, and that's something I wish I'd done, to be honest. There were a lot of people who I found quite intimidating on my internship, who I kept seeing across the office, but I never introduced myself to. Um, and, you know, if I introduced myself, they would have said, oh, you know, great to meet you. Welcome to the company kind of thing. There's, there's no drawback. Um, and it shows confidence and it, it builds your network and that's that's crucial in any industry really. One of the things I didn't expect was it to be so relaxed and jovial almost. Um, I think I got this weird impression of the world of work for some reason from like films or TV or whatever. It was very strict and quite scary and quite boring and stuff like that. But actually it's a lot of talking to your colleagues, having fun conversations, having interesting conversations. Um, and I didn't expect there to be quite as much of that as there is. Um, the other thing, and this is sort of less work related, but I, I didn't think I'd learn so much non-work related from, from people. Um, I think when, when you go to school, you're kind of, you're there with people who live near you and who are your age. And then you go to uni and you, know, you learn more because there's loads of people from around the country, but they're all your age still. And then when you get to work, there's people from all over different countries, all of different ages. Um, and I just didn't expect, you know, the range of interesting personalities and hobbies and stuff that they, they'd all have. Um, I live in an apartment in, in Bermondsey. And the only reason I live there is because somebody who uh, worked at, at, at Schroeder's re recommended Bermondsey after he met me and said, oh, you know, you, you'd really like this. If you're looking for this, I lived there like five years ago. You'd really like this. Um, so yeah, I have him to thank for that. And I, I never thought I'd say that. I think it ties into what I was saying earlier about be be the one to to be to break the boundary almost and be the one as I said be the one to introduce yourself just go up to people you know off your hand well when you're allowed to off your hand um yeah give them a handshake and say hi I'm whoever I've just started here um can we get a coffee sometime and just talk about what you do and whether or not you have any advice the worst thing that can happen is that they can say, no, I'm too busy. Um, but the best thing that can happen is that you can then, you know, have a really interesting conversation and then that person knows who you are um, and that you were the first person to actually introduce yourself to them. Um, I think one of the things that really benefited me when I was on my internship was I asked loads of questions. Um, and even, I mean, even the stupid questions, I, there would be so many acronyms that I would have absolutely no idea what they meant. And I just say, okay, what does, what does that stand for? I have absolutely no idea. You've mentioned it like 20 times. I have not understood a single word. Um, and they'll just, you know, they'll basically go over what I've just heard, you know, 
point by point and tell me tell me what I didn't understand. And it's that kind of thing um, that sort of sets you apart. I mean, when, in my first rotation on my grad scheme, um, one of my one of the people said, you know, you you ask a lot of questions, um, but I think he was saying it in a good way um, because ultimately you're 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 an intern, you're a grad whatever it is, you're not going to know everything. And even the people who are 20 years older than you still don't know everything. They still ask questions. And I think that there's this stigma around interns and grads not wanting to ask questions, particularly stupid questions, because they think the other person will think that they're not intelligent enough or something like that. But ultimately, the reason you're there is to learn. And if the other person thinks that you're not intelligent enough just because you're asking a question, uh, well, I mean, you, you've still gained the answer. So, so it's your win is, is the way I see it. I think what I like most about it is that what I didn't like when I was in education is that you have this, you have like a mark scheme or you have a set of standards that you need to hit when you write an essay. Um, and it doesn't really let you play to your strengths that well. But when you come work for a, a company like Schroeder's, they let you do the thing that you, the way that you want to do it basically. So if they say, okay, go and write, you know, a sales strategy for this company. I would say, oh, you know, do you have a template? How do I do that? I don't, you know, what kind of thing do you want me to research? And they'll say, you know, like you tell me, you find a way to, you know, create a good sales strategy, however you think best, you know, you can, you can, you can figure that one out. Um, and I quite like that because it means that I'm not very good at Excel. Um, so I don't have to use something like that, but I can go and uh, do, you know, do the type of research that I am I'm, I'm good at. Um, I can put it in a format that I'm, you know, comfortable with uh, and and those who are who are good at excel etc and, and really good with numbers and stuff they can look at that side um so there's kind of no one right answer um, and i think that creative license is what i really like um and the, and the freedom to kind of play to your strengths rather than play to a narrative let's say that that is kind of created by examples and things like that